as of the end of 2022, I have ridden 1,230 different roller coasters across the world, 1,064 made of steel, 166 made of wood. In 2022, I rode 72 new roller coasters, and 6 of those cracked my top 100. Other coasters moved up as I got re-rides on them, while others moved down. I previously broke this up into two videos, but this is a compilation of my favorite 100 roller coasters in the world I've personally ridden as of the end of 2022. Now this list will only include rides I've personally ridden. This is why you won't see rides from places like China, South Korea, or Australia, as I haven't been there yet. I also need to note that I have not been on Hakuge at Nagashima Spa Land. That RMC was under construction when I visited the park a few years ago. I hope to make it back someday because that ride looks like it would have a chance to crack the top 10. This list will combine both wooden and steel coasters into one big list. I place rides assuming I'm in my favorite seat, and going by how the coaster is running in my most recent visits. I tend to prioritize rides with great airtime, strong pacing, and a beautiful setting. This list is all my personal opinion. I don't expect anyone to have the same list as me. When I compare two rides, it comes down to which one I have more fun on. If you want more in-depth thoughts on many of these rides, if you're looking for more in-depth thoughts on any of these rides, I have separate reviews posted for all but 9 of the coasters in this list. Also, to avoid being redundant, assume the rides are smooth in this list unless otherwise noted. Starting off the list at number 100 is Surf Coaster Leviathan at Sea Paradise. This Togo sit-down coaster shocked me. I thought it would be a tame jet coaster, but boy was I wrong. Instead, it has a series of drops with good airtime, sudden directional changes inducing laterals, and multiple forceful helixes. It's a long ride too, and this all takes place above the water. Number 99, New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. The original RMC has a very long layout. The first half has some wonderful elements. I love the powerful first drop. Then you have strong ejector airtime on the step up into the first overbank and the speed hill. Some do find the overbanks a bit repetitive, but they each feel different to me. The second in particular stands out for the crazy whip. The second half does lose a lot of steam though. There are still plenty of hills, but they aren't nearly as violent as the rides higher up on this list. You do have the superior Gerslauer trains and restraints though to the usual RMC ones. Number 98, Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland. This b &M Hyper is one of the best for airtime. The first half is a great first drop and several camelbacks offering very sustained floater airtime. Then the finale has some fun helixes and a few extra spots of airtime too. I think the airtime is best towards the back, but some of the valleys can get a bit rattly back there. Number 97, Flug der Damon at Haida Park. This is my favorite being on wing coaster. The layout is very well rounded. The wing over drop has hang time before blasting you with positive G's in the valley. The speed hill gives sustained floater airtime. The Ilma is a nice mix of positives going up and airtime going down. Then the final three inversions, including the one of a kind demonic knot, offer good laterals and whip up front and superb hang time in the back. Add in great use of terrain, and it's not hard to see why this is the king of the genre for me. Number 96, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Studios Florida. This Mauer X-Car coaster is an underrated one. The coaster pulls some great forces. You have several forceful turns and no shortage of airtime. There are a ton of mid-course brake runs, but you get good airtime entering and exiting them so I don't mind one bit. Then there's also an awesome non-inverting loop combining negative and lateral Gs. Add in some sweet onboard audio, and this ride is a pure joy. Now this ride can have a shuffle, but it's not enough to cause me pain with those lap bar restraints. Number 95, Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom. This is a classic indoor coaster. It's very dark, but you have some stars and just enough light to realize just how tight this coaster's clearances are. The four main drops give some really good airtime in the back car, and the tight helixes towards the end have some force as well. This ride is a tad jerky at points, but the trains are like riding on couches. Number 94, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot. 
This is an immersive ride start to finish. After a series of pre-shows, you board a prototype spinning coaster ride system from Vacoma. These ones don't spin freely. Rather, they rotate at predetermined points to emphasize a certain ride or story element. This ride is pure chaos and fun. I think it's Disney's best paced coaster. You have a fun launch at the start, followed by a long layout with some airtime pops and some fairly forceful turns. Then you also have the environment of Space Mountain with some giant video screens to progress the story. Lastly, you have onboard audio that's just plain pure fun. Number 93, Phoenix of Farrop Summerland. This Facoma sit-down looper has a nice blend of airtime and inversions. You have a dozen or so negative G moments. It's mostly floater pops, but the first drop does offer stronger, more sustained airtime in the back car. But the highlights are the three inversions. The stall loop has incredible hang time. Then the barrel roll and corkscrew offered incredible whip and laterals as the train hauls through them. The ride is light in the positive G's, but it's otherwise quite good all around. Number 92, Flying Aces of Ferrari World. This ride sort of looks like Skyrush, but it rides very differently. The trains feature more comfortable restraints, and while the first drop has strong ejector airtime, it's a more fluid moment. The coaster has a few other airtime moments too, but this ride's biggest strength are the laterals. The non-inverting loop and S-bends all try and eject you sideways, and then you have a hang time filled inversion at the end for good measure. Number 91, Pyrenees at Parque España. This B&M invert feels like a Batman the Ride clone scaled way up. You have the size of the larger inverts with the tenacity of the original layout. This is a wonderful combination. The inversions are as great as you'd expect, but I also want to highlight the super tight helix that pierces through the loop. That will make your legs tingle. Number 90, Katoon at Mirabilandia. This ride does many of the same things as Pyrenees. It's large, forceful, and snappy, but there are two things this one does better. First, the setting is more isolated, resulting in awesome night rides. Second, the drop is profiled in such a way that it gives some floater air time to juxtapose all those positive G's later in the ride. Number 89, Wild Train at Fantasiana. This PAX creation is the stats of a family coaster, but airtime rivaling most RMCs. The hills are profiled super sharply, so they all try and launch you into the ionosphere. Some may find the airtime too abrupt or jarring, but I love the absurdity of it especially when you see the terrifying head choppers this ride is paired with. Number 88, Rorosaurus at Storyland. This gravity group wood coaster is just four stories tall, but it has some aggressive airtime. You are thrown out of your seat at least a dozen times, and the airtime gets stronger as it goes. The finale is surprisingly good. It reminds me of Steel Vengeance's finale, as you have four tiny and intense hills that abruptly buck you upwards. I still cannot believe this rise at a children's park. Number 87, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. This raptor is a tale of two halves. The first half is top notch. The first drop is incredible ejector airtime in the back. You also have good airtime on the giant camelback and turnaround. Then the three inversions deliver too. The dive loop is excellent laterals. Then the stall and zero G roll will leave you dangling against the restraint. The second half dials it back though. You'll still get airtime, but it's more like graceful floater. And while I don't find the over the shoulder restraints on the Raptors uncomfortable, I do prefer the more freeing usual lap bars. Number 86, Rouge Banana Tivoli Gardens. This scenic railway is one of the few rides that still runs with a brakeman or brakewoman. You have no seat belts and just a lap bar that can be really loose. So there are several drops in this ride that'll fling you a foot into the air. That's especially true if the employee is light on the braking. Some are more conservative than others, but you can get some shocking ejector airtime with the right one. But this coaster is even more to offer beyond the negative G's. The turns are unbanked, and because there's no seat divider, you can slide side to side. Then I love this ride's location as it takes place in and around a themed mountain. Number 85. Pirat in a Jersey Summerland. Now I get why people like Intamin Megalites after riding this one. 
This coast runs so much better than Tobuzu's Kawasemi because it has a faster lift hill, fuller trains, and it's constantly cycling. The ride still needs some time to warm up, but it was everything I could want by the afternoon. The first drop on large S hill only have moderate floater airtime, but the other hills have strong ejector airtime rivaling the company's larger hypercoasters. Those middle S hills in particular are super intense. Then the low turns throw in positive G's for variety. Number 84, Wild Mouse XXL. This is your standard Wild Mouse jacked up with steroids. I never thought a Wild Mouse could be this crazy. The ride used to be your standard mock Wild Mouse, but it was transformed in 2012 into the XXL version. The ride's height was doubled, and two large and zippy drops were added at the start. This leads to you taking the old layout with way more speed, and there are zero brakes, so you get some of the most violent laterals of any coaster, and the hills all have aggressive airtime with the added speed. I was getting powerful ejector airtime on several of them, and to top it all off, you have a funhouse style queue line. I still cannot believe there's a traveling coaster this good. Number 83, Monster at Adventureland. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster has such a neat layout. You start with a beyond vertical drop with thigh crushing ejector airtime. Then you have a variety of elements that will get you out of your seat. Some deliver airtime, some deliver lateral strong enough to chuck you sideways. Then you have some great hang time moments on the inversions and super slow turns. Usually, I dislike when coasters slow down like this but I have no issue with how Monster does it because it always finds a way to get you out of your seat. Number 82, Cannibal Lagoon. I cannot believe this Utah park designed and built this ride in-house. It is a big and unique hypercoaster. That 20-story tall, 116-degree beyond vertical plunge is pure insanity. The drop seemingly lasts forever, starting off with ejector airtime before morphing into floater for the rest of the descent. Then the ride packs in for great inversions too. The Illman is good positives, the dive loop is a shocking pop of ejector airtime going into it, and the lagoon roll is some truly crazy hang time because you have just the lap bar, and there is a bit of theming around the ride too. Number 81, Alpina Blitz at Neglo Land. This is Mach's take on the Megalite. The ride is very similar in terms of forces with one key difference. This one starts off with an incredible drop with some strong ejector airtime. It's a fitting start for the negative G's that follow. Number 80, Swamp Fox at Family Kingdom. Now I admittedly have no clue where to fairly rank this ride. My 2020 rides had Swamp Fox as a top 10 wood coaster for me. The ride has some downright aggressive ejector airtime despite having just buzz bars. But in 2022, two things were working against this ride. One, I rode an opening day when it was a lot cooler. Two, the ride was running considerably rougher. Shortly after my visit, the coaster actually closed for extensive retracking, and afterwards locals said it was riding to how I experienced it in 2020. Further complicating things is that this coaster received extensive damage from Hurricane Ian, and it's getting some more track work. Hopefully that means it should run peak form in 2023 and beyond. I still enjoyed this coaster in 2022, but the airtime was not quite at the elite level anymore. It was still pretty darn good and abrupt though. Number 79, Renegade at Valley Fair. This is one of the best GCI layouts. I like how it's tucked in a backstage area, so night rides are really dark in this one. The first half has these speed hills with sustained floater. The large turnarounds have the strong jolts of airtime you'd expect from a GCI. Then the second half throws in some more quick pops of airtime. Now, there are two downsides with this coaster compared to the GCIs ahead of it. One, it has a bit of a shimmy. Two, this one has retractable seatbelts that can restrict your airtime a bit. Number 78, Mindbender at Galaxy Land. This Schwarzkopf recently closed, and it's a real shame because it was a super intense coaster. It had a series of steep and devilishly twisted plunges, and three of the most powerful inversions of any coaster. Those three loops are automatic gray outs for me. The finale also threw in a pop of air time or two, plus a disorienting helix. And I still cannot believe this ride was crammed indoors. Number 77, Chimera at La Feria de Chapultepec. This is an even more intense version of Mindbender. 
Part of that was Mexico City's elevation making me dizzy. Part of that was the lack of braking. This led to enhanced positive Gs in the inversions and some unintended airtime and lateral moments later in the layout. I was skeptical this ride would ever run again after the accident, but I'm glad Indiana Beach saved the Schwarzkopf and it should finally reopen in 2023. Number 76, Storm Runner at Hershey Park. This is America's most complete intimate accelerator coaster. The hydraulic launch is intense. It yanks you down the launch track in an instant. Then I love this ride's diverse layout. The top has fantastic ejector airtime going up and down. Then you have three inversions. There's a mildly forceful Cobra loop, and more notably, the flying snake dive. You get airtime going up, then you have a hang time filled barrel roll, and it ends with a disorienting twisting dive loop. Then you have an extra hump or two on the way of the brakes while keeping all that speed until the end. Number 75, Junker at Powerland. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster feels like a launched version of Monster. The initial LSM launch has some serious kick to it. Then every single element offers good laterals while also lifting you out of your seat in some way. Your body is really tossed about thanks to those freeing lap bars. I especially love the ejector airtime on the top hat and the hang time on the three inversions. Number 74, Boardwalk Bullet Akima Boardwalk. How Gravity Group crammed this wood coaster into one acre, I will never know. The first half is incredible. You have some wonderful drops and then a series of smaller hills throwing you from the train. I particularly love the double up after the first drop. The airtime does decrease in strength as the ride progresses moving towards floater and weaker pops, but the brilliantly layered layout hides what comes next at each point. Number 73, Gold Striker at California's Great America. This is the most intense GCI I've experienced. The recent track work helped this ride immensely. It was running fairly smoothly in 2022 and ripping through the layout. It's fast on its own and the speed is augmented by the tunnels and supports you whiz past and you of course have a bevy of airtime pops. Not quite as strong as the other top tier GCIs, but when paired with everything else, this is a very complete ride. Number 72, Vodon Timber Coaster at Europa Park. This GCI may be a pinch less intense than Gold Striker, but I prefer it for three reasons. One, it was extremely smooth when I last rode it in 2021. Two, the airtime is stronger. Like Renegade, you have a mix of straight hills with sustained floater airtime, plus sharper hills that really toss you from your seat. 3. This has the best drop of any GCI. It's big and chock full of sustained negative Gs, and it has the same great speed as the prior one. Number 71, Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. This is GCI's best ground up coaster. It has wonderful pacing and an incredible location in the woods. By day, you get the sense of speed whizzing past trees. Then you get a nearly pitch black ride at night, and the layout has plenty of airtime hills. Each one pops you from your seat, and despite having an out and back layout, the hills also twist side to side to keep you on your toes. Then you have the shed at the end. It's quirky, but it always puts a smile on my face. Number 70, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I heard this coaster ran faster than Jersey Devil, and people were not lying. This ride has the same great start with some extra force on the camelback and far turnaround, but the second half shocked me in a good way. Unlike Jersey Devil which meekly lifts you from your seat, this one had some really good sustained airtime in the return run. It's the finale I expect from an RMC. Number 69, Medusa's Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. This RMC conversion doesn't pack as much airtime as the other hybrids, but the turnarounds and drop down the hill still deliver good ejector airtime. This coaster's biggest strengths are its pacing and inversions. You rip through the layout. No elements are wasted, and all three inversions offer great hang time. Everyone mentions the barrel roll drop at the start, but that final roll is my favorite. I do need a caution that I haven't experienced Medusa at its peak though. In my first visit, it was running slower due to the VR conversion. Then my second visit, it was running a truncated 5 car Franken train instead of the usual 6 car train. Number 68, 
twisted cyclone at Six Flags over Georgia. This hybrid conversion is one of the shortest coasters RMC has ever made, and it certainly feels as such. But the elements it has are very good. The drops and bunny hills launch you skywards. Then you have three floaty inversions, including the unique reverse cobra roll turnaround. But the best part has to be the giant wave turn. It offers some of the strongest and most sustained sideways airtime on the planet. Number 67, Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. The world needs more chance Hyper GTX coasters. This ride feels like an RMC with its powerful ejector airtime and pacing. The coaster rips through the layout, never missing a chance to launch riders skywards. That's best seen in the finale, which has some of the most aggressive ejector pops on any coaster. It doesn't have the same sense of speed as coasters higher on this list, but the airtime is phenomenal. Number 66, Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. The original B&M Giga Coaster feels an element or two short, but it's still a ton of fun. It starts with an epic first drop. Few drops offer more sustained airtime. Then the turn afterwards hits you with strong Gs. While this ride doesn't have as many hills as their hypers, the hills included have very strong floater airtime. I particularly love the little speed hill mixing good airtime and laterals. Some of the turns towards the end are pretty forgettable, but the good more than makes up for it. Number 65, Time Traveler Silver Dollar City. The prototype mock extreme spinning coaster is an absolute delight, especially if you're in the back car. That vertical drop out of the station is incredible back there. You get sustained ejector airtime while sideways or backwards as you plunge down the hill. The rest of the layout has some disorienting inversions and a few additional airtime pops. Some of the turns are just okay, but the fact you spin throughout keeps the layout fresh. Number 64, Terran at Fantasia Land. This Intamin multi launch coaster grew on me in 2022, but I should add that I experienced this coaster on a 100 degree day. I got some extra airtime pops in places I hadn't previously, but the best moments rode similarly. Both launches are good, and the layout is delightfully convoluted as you twist through Klugheim, and you can't tell where you're going next in a world-class visuals. Then the start of each half has a few twisted hills with some strong airtime and laterals, especially with those open lap bars. I just wish each half didn't fizzle out towards the end. Number 63, Nemesis at Alton Towers. This iconic B&M invert is currently being rebuilt, and it rides unlike any other. The park's height ordinance should have doomed this ride, but instead it became a strength. Rather than going high, this coaster is an unconventional layout working its way down a hill and into trenches resulting in sweet visuals. The elements are taken in a different order than usual, and each is very intense. The spiral is the craziest part, but the four inversions are all snappy and forceful. This coaster is short, but the uniqueness and power make it special. Number 62. Montu at Busch Gardens, Tampa. This is the best B&M invert in the United States. All seven inversions are excellent. Both vertical loops and the Illman hit you with good positive Gs. The zero G roll offers a blend of float and whip. Then the bat wing is the best element of all. The snaps are super abrupt, and the positives in the valley try to melt your body. And not to be outdone, there's a nice corkscrew at the end that flings you through it and the ride's lowest points are accompanied by these themed Egyptian trenches. Number 61, El Toro at Six Flags Grey Adventure. I know I'm known for finding this Intamin prefabricated wood coaster overrated, but I totally get why some have it in their top five. The ride's four best moments have some of the strongest and most sustained ejector airtime you can get anywhere. That includes the wicked first drop, the two subsequent camelbacks, and the rolling thunder hill. I'll try and launch you into orbit. However, I prefer rides that are consistently great start to finish. The turnaround has been quite bumpy in recent years, and the smaller hills just have some weak floater airtime. Then the finale has some fast bends, but I wish the ride continued to focus on negative Gs. Number 60, Colossus at Haida Park. The original Intamin prefab rides like El Toro with an improved finale, at least based on my tastes. I prefer that return run with the bunny hills. They offer nice airtime, and you shoot through that beautiful statue that emits fire. The first half is a pinch less forceful than El Toro, but the ride's about as smooth as a wood coaster can be start to finish, so it's far more re-rideable. 
I just wish that pace killing helix wasn't in there. Number 59, Giant Dipper at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. This prior and church wood coaster is nearly 100 years old, but it packs in more thrills than many modern rides. This coaster mixes some shocking airtime with some downright powerful laterals. The turnarounds violently plaster you to the side of the train. Then if you're in the back, many drops will offer some really strong lifter airtime, especially if you're on the smaller side like me and get quite a bit of space with a single position lap bar. The ride has a bit of a shuffle to it, but the ride runs much smoother than you'd expect given its age. Number 58, Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This Gravity Group wood coaster is running better than ever with all the recent track work. It's super smooth, and the airtime towards the end is a bit more oomph than before, but the first half is still the highlight. It is one of the best parts of any coaster. You have one of my favorite drops out there between the view and powerful airtime. Then the bunny hills each have sustained floater airtime, and the setting is incredible. The rise atop a hill facing Lake Erie plunges down a ravine, and you also cross a highway. Number 57, Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. This is what would happen if Twisted Cyclone had an extra lap, and coincidentally, this RMC hybrid is often criticized for slowing way down at the end. That final lap is slow, no denying that but the elements still work for me. The final 0G roll has spectacular hang time, as do the other two inversions earlier in the ride, and the final hills still lift you out of your seat. But the ride's best parts are front-loaded. You have a powerful drop, a grey-out inducing overbank, and some abrupt airtime, most notably on the outward banked hill midway through the ride. I just wish the second and fourth turnarounds were a bit wilder. Number 56. Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land. This is a gigantic giga coaster from Morgan. The first half feels like one of their hyperscaled way up. The big hills have lots of sustained floater airtime. Then the turnaround section has some speedy turns, albeit lacking on the force. Then the return run is a never ending series of bunny hills with some really strong floater airtime. It reminds me of the bunny hills you'd see in a BM hyper, just more in a row. I wish the first half didn't jackhammer in the valleys and that you could pick your row though. Number 55, Superman El Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico. This is Morgan's best ground up coaster. The pre-lift occurs on a hillside and gives some surprise pops of airtime before you hit the main layout. After a long lift hill, you have a more forceful layout than usual. The first drop has lots of sustained floater and the turnaround section goes nuts. You have a helix with strong laterals plus some hills with some aggressive airtime. Then the return run, if untrimmed, has some really nice floater airtime as well. And all these great elements are paired with a spectacular view of the mountains and the city skyline. Number 54, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure. This multi-launch coaster is just pure fun. The ride tells a cohesive story, and the theming is great. It feels like you're zipping through the Forbidden Forest, and the few animatronics included look amazing. Then the coaster itself is great too. It's long, and each of the seven launches has good pull to it. Then the turns have sneaky force as well. And the side-to-side -side action has more kick if you're on the motorbike because you're raised upwards. And there are some surprise elements too that enhance the experience, but I don't want to spoil those. Number 53, Goliath at Laronde. This mini hyper doesn't quite break the 200-foot barrier, but it doesn't need to. It may have the most floater airtime of any B&M. This ride is just one camelback after another. Some may call the layout unoriginal, but I'll take the never-ending series of airtime hills. It is all floater airtime, but each moment is very sustained. This one also has no mid-course, so the pacing is strong start to finish, and the views of Montreal are stunning. Number 52, Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. This is one of the most powerful B&M hypers. Every single drop in Bunny Hill on this one seems to give excellent floater airtime, and the far turnaround is downright crazy. It is an extremely intense downwards helix that causes me to gray out every time. This one is also super well paced, and I like how it goes outside the park's main boundary. The one con with this rise is several valleys in the first half have a bad rattle that does hurt its rewritability. Number 51, Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Finishing the run in the B&M Hypers is Mako. This one has some of the best floater airtime in the world on the outward leg. It's forceful, 
and extremely sustained, particularly in the first Camelback, the return run isn't as airtime focused. Instead, you have some highly banked turns above the midway and water. The visuals are nice, and they do sort of throw you sideways, but I would have preferred some extra airtime. That being said, the ride's first half and setting make this ride special. Number 50. Osiris of Park Asterix. This is my favorite B&M invert. It has such a unique layout in terms of theming, sequencing, and elements. The most striking thing for me is the airtime. There are several drops off for airtime pops, and then the steep twisting first drop gives a shocking ejector airtime and lateral combination. Some of the inversions will also have you levitating out of your seat as well. Then if you want power, this ride has you covered with the turns that will get your blood flowing to the feet, and some forceful inversions in the first half. And all of this is accompanied by some Montu-like Egyptian theming and trenches. Number 49, Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This may be the most underrated RMC. The first drop isn't straight like the other hybrids. It's a near vertical, twisting plunge with crazy ejector airtime and laterals. Then this rise some of the best inversions of any RMC. The giant stall in particular stands out as you get sustained, inverted airtime, and some terrifying head chopper simultaneously. And the airtime hills also offer some thigh crushing negative G's. Some of the turns are pretty forgettable, but that's a minor issue. Number 48, I Speed at Mirabolandia. This is basically the greatest hits of the US Intamin coasters. The LSM launch is a kick like that of Maverick. The giant top hat has some great ejector airtime, like you get in something like Storm Runner. The camelback has sustained ejector like their hypers. Then there's a wild lateral snap into the far turnaround, like those transitions in I 305. Then there's an S hill with a strong ejector pop, like the one in the Megalites. Then you also have two barrel rolls. The first has some serious whip and airtime, like the Mosasaurus roll of Velocicoaster. The second has more hang time, but not as much whip. There are two downsides to this coaster. One, the finale is on the weaker side. Two, you have hard over the shoulder restraints that can cause some headbanging if you aren't careful. Number 47, Maverick at Cedar Point. This coaster is such a diverse ride. The ride starts with an intense, ejector airtime filled beyond vertical drop. That's immediately followed by some low S bends offering speed, laterals, and positives. Then you have a big airtime hill and some decent corkscrews. The second half kicks things off with a punchy launch in the dark. Then the second half has a few more airtime hills, and these two super snappy stangle dives that violently contort the train. While the over the shoulder restraints aren't uncomfortable in this one, I wish this ride more freeing lap bars like the newer Intamins. Number 46, Silver Star Europa Park. Let me preface this ranking by saying I've only experienced this coaster untrimmed. This was the case in both my fall and summer visits. That gave me a much more favorable opinion on this B&M Hyper than most. The outward leg has some really good floater airtime under these conditions. Then even the ride's detractors agree the second half is among the best of any B&M Hyper. You have some really strong airtime pops, a good helix, and a fun twist before the brakes. Number 45, Candemonium at Hershey Park. This is my favorite B&M Hyper in the US. This one has better pacing between the lack of a mid-course brake run and the improved speed over the elements. The first half has some very strong floater airtime. The second half wraps around the entry plaza. You get some sweet views while also getting thrown out of your seat a few more times. And this section hits harder during candy lane when the ride tends to go untrimmed. Number 44, Orion at Kings Island. This giga coaster has grown on me with each ride. It may feel an element or two short, but what this ride has is very good. You have a world-class drop with several seconds of strong sustained airtime. Then there are a handful of other hills with stronger airtime than usual for a B&M. It is very sustained. And sometimes, you're on your side like that hill after the helix when you're getting those negative Gs. Beyond the airtime, this ride has amazing speed, some spots of solid positive Gs, and a great setting tucked back in the park. Number 43, Formula Rosa Ferrari World. This is the best accelerator coaster for two reasons. One, that launch. This is the world's fastest coaster, and the hydraulic launch is incredible. It has a good initial yank, 
and then it hits a second gear halfway down the launch track that's breathtaking. The second reason this ride is so special is its length. Most of the accelerator coasters are over in a flash, but this one is nearly one minute of prime ride time. There are several floater airtime hills, and these big graceful turns showcasing the speed. This isn't the most intense ride beyond the initial launch. Basically, it's Top Thrill Dragster's launch, followed by Millennium Force, and that's more than fine by me. Number 42, Lek Coaster at Legendia. This is an incredible ride if you love positive Gs. I kept on graying out from the forceful valleys, and that initial sidewinder also caused me to lose my vision. Then this new generation Vacoma does several other things well too. There are some good airtime moments even with those restrictive vest restraints. This includes the bunny hills and that devilishly twisted plunge at the start. Then the inversions later in the ride have some good whip, particularly that corkscrew through the station. Number 41, Cyclone at Luna Park. This classic wood coaster has been imitated many times, but the power of the original has never been duplicated. The trains are the secret sauce. You have no seat dividers and a single position lap bar, so you are thrown around in every which direction. The back is the best seat for airtime. The bigger drops offer some aggressive ejector airtime. The front is the best for laterals. You are violently slammed side to side in each turnaround. Make sure to try both for the full cyclone experience. Number 40, Balder at Lisaberg. This Intamin prefabber is repetitive, but I don't mind. This wood coaster is a series of camelbacks and bunny hills broken up by turnarounds. Now those turns are admittedly weak, but every single hill has some very strong and sustained ejector airtime. I have not ridden a wood coaster offering a larger quantity of this type of airtime. This ride recently reopened from extensive track work, but I still found it super smooth when I rode it back in 2017. Number 39, Railblazer at California's Great America. The original RMC Raptor layout is one of the fastest paced coasters in the world. The train moves through the layout at cartoonish speeds. The first half is some insane airtime. The first drop, mid drop, dive loop, and S hill all launch you into orbit. Then the latter two airtime moments also throw in wild laterals as well. And you also get some good positives on the initial pullout and that far turnaround. The elements in the second half dial it back a bit but they're still solid. This coaster has two flaws holding it back from a higher spot though. One, it may be the shortest coaster in this list. Two, the over the shoulder restraints are not ideal for an airtime based ride. Number 38, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This is a mirrored version of Railblazer. At least when I last rode this one in 2020, I thought it was a little smoother and faster than the prior ride which is why I give it a slim edge. It is also worth knowing I have not yet ridden Stunt Pilot at Silverwood. This is a nearly identical layout to the prior two rides, just with a slightly longer train and some tweak profiling, so I suspect it would have placed similarly. Number 37, Schwerdes Karna at Hansa Park. This was probably the biggest loser from the past year. While this is still Gerslauer's best coaster by far, the ride was very shaky in 2022, I came off each ride with a headache, but it was worth it for a ride this powerful and unique, it just wasn't very re-rideable. The ride tells a really cool story, and there are some special coaster elements playing off that. Then the main layout starts with a massive twisting vertical drop with ejector airtime and laterals. Then you zoom through a layout offering a mix of speed, aggressive laterals, and airtime pops. If this ride were smooth, it would easily place in the top 10. Number 36. Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This CCI coaster was brilliantly designed. The first half has some larger hills with solid airtime, but this coaster ratchets things up significantly in the second half. The drop off the former mid course is wicked ejector airtime. Then it feels out of control as you charge through the structure. You have amazing speed and near misses, plus a series of airtime pops and lateral jolts. And speaking of laterals, this ride ends with one of the most forceful helixes of any coaster. You are pinned to the side of the train for nearly 10 seconds. And this ride is still running smoothly 7 years after the major retrack by GCI. Number 35, Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. This RMC hybrid can run wildly different depending on the year. 
what it was flying when I last rode it in 2021. You start with a cool barrel roll down drop and a big camelback with several seconds of sustained ejector airtime. Then the second half is briefer, more violent pops of airtime, especially on that trick track double up. And for some variety, the zero-g roll throws in some laterals and whip as you haul through it. Number 34, Twisted Timbers of King's Dominion. This RMC feels like a more fleshed out version of Storm Chaser. The barrel roll down drop has a bit more power, and you have not one, not two, but three consecutive camelbacks with airtime matching that have Storm Chaser's second hill. Then the second half keeps tossing you upwards in the smaller hills, and there's the occasional inversion mixed in too. What keeps this ride out of the top 25 is the lack of speed compared to the rides ahead of it, but few can beat this one in terms of pure airtime. Number 33, Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This Intamin multi-launch coaster gets better as it goes. The sequencing is phenomenal. The initial launch is slow, but it still has some oomph to it, and it's followed by a ZRG winder with wonderful hang time. Then you go into the swing launch sequence. The acceleration is fine, but it's the airtime moments that steal the show. The small bumps give shocking ejector airtime, and the back spike gives some delightful weightlessness. Then the second half carries all that speed. You have a big top hat with ejector airtime and a breathtaking view. The big overbank offers a nice mix of airtime and laterals. The zero-g stall has some inverted airtime, and the final turns toss you side to side. I was worried this ride would feel short, but it has a very satisfying length to it. Number 32, Flying Dinosaur at Universal Studios Japan. This may be B&M's most intense coaster. The start is downright insane. You have a super steep first drop of some weird airtime on a flying coaster. Then you have two of the most forceful elements back to back. You have this inversion that rotates you 540 degrees, so you end up on your back. You then get G's like a pretzel loop. And immediately after, you go into the actual pretzel loop. The second half isn't quite as extreme, but you still get some fun hang time in the slower inversions, plus some extra airtime pops. And this is all while flying above pathways and waterways. Number 31, X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This was Arrow's magnum opus. The original fourth dimension coaster was ahead of its time between its scale and flipping seats. This coaster is insane. It starts with that incredible drop. It's nearly vertical, and the seats perform a flip at the last second. Then you have some of my favorite inversions of any ride. The first Raven turn offers strong positive Gs and very sustained airtime. The two Camelbacks in the middle offer weightlessness as the track and trains rotate. The final Raven turn delivers crushing positive Gs. This coaster is bouncy, particularly in the outside seats but few rides still terrify me to this day like this one. Number 30, Edge and Ica Fuji Q Highland. This is SNS's follow-up to X2. This 4D coaster takes everything X2 does, both good and bad, and amplifies that. It's bigger, performs more flips, and has better pacing. X2's weakest spot by far is the far turnaround, but Edge and Ica fixes this to have more speed in a seat flip. However, this coaster is rougher than X2, at least when I rode it in 2018. Although I haven't heard others say that beyond the group I was with, so maybe it was running rougher than usual when I visited. Number 29, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. If you love speed, the original Intamin Giga Coaster is for you. You need to ride this coaster up front. It is sublime rocking through Millennium Island at such great speeds. While the individual elements may not match many coasters on this list, this rise more than the sum of its parts. But there are some great moments I want to call out. The first drop is one of the best at any ride between the view and airtime. The first overbank is one of the hardest grayouts for me of any coaster. And the remaining airtime hills offer some fun floater airtime. Number 28, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. I cannot believe Intamin built a giga coaster like this. While Millennium Force stayed low to the ground, this one has the snappy maneuvers of Maverick. That profiling combined with the ride speed is ridiculous in the best way possible. The low turn after the drop is a serious gray out moment for most people. Then each directional change is so abrupt that they somehow cause airtime. 
Then you have some other underrated airtime moments, most notably the ejector airtime on that giant first drop, and the big camelback underneath it. I prefer the rides ahead of it that focus more on negative Gs, but I-305's raw power has to be appreciated. Number 27, Hyperion at Energylandia. This Intamin Hyper starts as an out-and-back coaster before transitioning into a twister. I love this type of layout, and the elements are excellent too. The first half has some strong and sustained airtime, particularly in the first drop and subsequent camelback. The directional changes in this ride tend to offer nice laterals and or good positive Gs. Then the second half has a series of quicker airtime bursts on the smaller hills. The one downside with this coaster is that there is an odd lull in the middle with a weak camelback and overbank, but everything else is exactly what I wanted. Number 26, Taiga Linnenmaki. This Intamin feels like a cross of two rides higher up in this list, Lisa Berg's Helix and Universal's Velocicoaster. You have the varied layout of the latter, and the setting of the former. Getting such a diverse layout that not only utilizes the terrain, but also offers some breathtaking views of the nearby city is truly special. This coaster has really strong pacing as it zips from element to element with no downtime. The launches are quite good, and there are several satisfying airtime moments, but the inversions steal the show for me. I love the hang time on that supersized stall, the ZRG winder early in the ride, and the barrel roll right at the end. Number 25, Helix at Liseberg. This mock multi-launch coaster is located on a wooded hill in the center of Gothenburg. The sight lines are stunning, particularly at night. Then you have a really good layout too. It's so complete. Now the launches are admittedly weak, but everything else is elite. You have seven inversions. Most are floaty and offer hang time, which is sweet with those lap bar trains. Then there are some powerful ejector airtime moments too, particularly in the big camelbacks. Number 24, Shambhala Port Aventura. This is easily the best B&M Hyper. It's taller than most of them, and the ride is a series of spectacular drops, particularly if you're in the back row. Each has oodles of floater airtime. Combined with the long trains, this ride produces a rare stomach drop sensation I don't usually get on a roller coaster. Every hill has great airtime too. And on top of that, the initial pullout and far turnaround have great positive Gs, and you have a stunning view of the mountains and water throughout the ride too. Number 23, Wildfire at Colmarden Zoo. I basically rode this RMC Woody in the worst possible conditions. It was a cool fall day, and I only rode it in the first two hours of the day, and I usually was the only person on the train. So despite it likely running slow, I still loved it. The start was one of the best of any coaster. You have a giant drop chock full of ejector airtime, a big stall hanging you upside down for several seconds, and a wild twist and shout. Then the middle has the quicker pops and floaty inversions other RMCs are known for. I did think the ride ran out of steam towards the very end, but everything that preceded it along with that setting made this ride worth the hours of public transit it took to get there. Number 22, Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park. This Intamin Mega Coaster is one of the best for sustained ejector airtime. Every single camelback in Bunny Hill throws you out of your seat for seconds at a time. Then you also have one of the world's best drops. That super steep twisting plunge delivers an incredible combo of ejector airtime and crazy laterals. And all this takes place in the woods. While I love the start and end, the middle section does have a series of turns and overbanks that are just okay. The rides ahead of it are more consistent. Number 21, Fury 325 of Carowinds. This is B&M's masterpiece. It takes the elements we love from their other gigas, but adds extra length, and then you fly start to finish. That outward leg is a series of low turns, the wind will power blast your face, and the maneuvers also try to diagonally toss you from the train. The ride had plenty of airtime too. The final few bunny hills and the treble cleft turnaround offer some really strong airtime and then you cannot forget about that world-class first drop either. The sustained airtime is otherworldly. There is one hill in the return run that's a dud, and the helix is just okay, which keeps this out of the top 20, but everything else is elite. Number 20, Phoenix at Knobles. What makes this coaster special is the restraints, or lack thereof. You have just a buzz bar and no seatbelts, so every airtime moment will launch you a foot into the air, 
it's incredible. You get airtime on every hill, and Phoenix gets stronger as it goes. The Double Down offers one of the most jarring airtime moments of any ride if you're in the back car. Then the final four bunny hills are one of the best sequences on any coaster, as you are slammed into the lap bar again and again. I always come off this ride laughing. The first few hills did seem to have a bit less power than past years of my 2022 rides, which caused it to slide down a few spots. Number 19, Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. CCI did a fantastic job with this one. It's impressive they could build this ride in such a heavily wooded hillside. That setting makes this coaster special. This coaster's layout goes out and back, but the trees obscure what comes next and heighten the overall speed. Then the way this coaster changes elevation allows it to maintain its speed right up until the end. And there's plenty of airtime hills. It's mostly floater, but you have two ejector pops in the outward leg. Then this ride also mixes in some sneaky laterals. The first few elements in far turnaround all pin you to the side of the train. Then there are some subtle changes of direction between hills that give quick lateral jolts. I know this ride can get a little rough further back in the train, but it's just as special as ever for me up front. Then you also have the world-class night rides that vaulted this coaster into the top 20 for me. Number 18, Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This is a unique RMC hybrid for several reasons. The biggest factor is the location on the quarry wall. You not only go up there, but you have two world-class drops going over the edge. The first drop in particular is my favorite drop of any coaster, between the ejector airtime, lateral kinks, and visuals. The ride also has several other strong airtime moments and a super floaty zero-g roll for good measure. And these forces are heightened by the more comfortable Gerslauer trains. Now I know some take issue with the slow section above the quarry. While you do have little speed up there, the elements are profiled in such a way that they either give it abrupt airtime pops or lateral hang time, so I stay engaged. Number 17, Coaster at Peony Playland. When I last rode this coaster, it was an even wilder version of Phoenix. You also had no seatbelts and an even smaller single position lap bar, so every airtime moment catapulted me a foot into the air. Then this one also had no seat dividers, so it also threw me side to side in each turn. But this coaster recently underwent a big refurbishment, and unfortunately, it received seatbelts. The uncontrolled nature is what makes this ride special. This ride will still have good forces, but it will no longer deliver the primal fear of my 2019 rides, so I suspect this will follow the top 25 when I get back on it. Number 16, Fly of Fantasia Land. This prototype next generation flying coaster from Vacoma is a special ride. The way it blends thrills and theming through the entire layout is unbelievable. You fluidly fly through Rookberg. No coaster simulates the feeling of flight like this one. You have a seemingly organic flight path as you go every which direction. You have some stunning near misses, and the elements are quite good too. The turns and valleys of crushing positive Gs, especially further back in the train. It's one of the best coasters in the world for positives in my opinion. There are several bunny hills popping you out of your seat, which is a bizarre feeling in the flying position. You also have two floaty inversions, and last but not least, you cannot experience a launch in the flying position on any other ride. Number 15, Zadra Energylandia. This ground up RMC is blistering speed. It feels like a larger version of Six Flags Great America's Goliath with a robust finale. The first half is sensational. The first drop is surreal ejector airtime plus scary head choppers. The giant turnaround offers strong positives going up and negative Gs going down. The stall offers nice upside down airtime, and the outward bank turnaround is violent. Then the second half throws in two more inversions and some additional airtime pops, including this rapid S hill at the end of the ride. Number 14, Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is one of the more unique RMCs. This pseudo Mobius coaster features two tracks side by side. This means you get to experience both tracks in a single ride, and if dispatches are fast enough, you also get to duel. The visuals when this happen are special. The downside to this setup is that you have a lengthy second lift hill halfway through the ride interrupting the otherwise frenetic pacing. Those main sections are jam-packed with great elements. The blue side in particular has some very strong airtime start to finish. But the green side is the better inversion with the zero-g stall, although 
The 0G roll on the blue side has some insane laterals. Number 13, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. This coaster has shot up my rankings over the past few years, and that has coincided with the new wheels that sped this ride back up to the early 2000s speeds. You have a similar layout to Hyperion, but I have a soft spot for this one because you have the enhanced visuals run along the Connecticut River and Park Midways. Then the elements really pop. Almost every hill has excellent ejector airtime, particularly the fourth hill, which is one of the best elements of any coaster. And the valleys and turns contrast that with good positive Gs. Now I know many hate the restraints, but I actually think they work well on this ride, for me at least, because they rest on my thighs, so my lap is exposed and really lifts upwards. Number 12, Sky Rush at Hershey Park. It's impressive Intamin crammed a hypercoaster where they did, and that explains the brute intensity. This cramp setting leads to tight pullouts and turns high in positive Gs, and the airtime hills are quite compact, so you get major ejector airtime. But there are two other maneuvers I specifically need to call out. One is the first drop. It delivers powerful airtime over the top, but then there's a kink halfway down that springboards you even higher. I haven't experienced a drop like it anywhere else. Second, you have these twisted hills that offer some of the scariest laterals of any coaster, because these trains have very little sideways bracing. I know some find the restraints too tight. While they aren't overly comfortable, they only make a little contact with your thighs and that heightens the ride's forces. Number 11, Shivering Timbers at Michigan's Adventure. This imposing CCI is nearly one mile long of pure airtime. You have one Camelback and Bunny Hill after another, each offering strong and sustained floater airtime. It feels like you're out of your seat more than you're in it. While you do not have any ejector airtime like the rides in the top 10, the sheer quantity more than compensates. And for some variety, the turnaround and Helix Finale dish out some really nice laterals. Number 10, Ride to Happiness at Plopsaland Japan. This showed us what the Mach Extreme Spinner was truly capable of. This ride's mayhem. The vehicle span a good clip throughout, making each ride an element unique. The highlights for me are the inversions. They're some of the greatest of any ride. The twisted JoJo roll out of the station offers extreme hang time, as does the super disorienting double dive loop later in the ride. That's my favorite inversion anywhere. The zero G roll is quite good too. Then the banana roll and vertical loop will mess with your sense of directions you spin throughout them. Along with these inversions, you have some strong airtime moments. I particularly love the ejector airtime in that broken up top hat early in the ride. The ride did fall after some re-rides because I had a better grasp of what was coming, and I noticed the lull before the second launch, but it's still a world-class coaster. Number 9, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This is a special hyper coaster. Morgan took an old arrow looper and transformed it into an airtime machine. They kept the legendary second drop down the ravine, and I'm glad they did because it's one of the best drops out there between the length, airtime, and views. The rest of the layout was overhauled. You have some serious force in the subsequent valleys and overbank. Then the second half has some of the most aggressive ejector airtime of any coaster. It's strong on its own, but it's extra special with those roomy lap bars. It is shocking to have a restraint this minimal with airtime this intense, but that's why Phantom is a top 10 coaster for me. Number 8. Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. This intimate excels in every area. It's one of the few thrill rides that can incorporate theming not only in the queue line, but during the ride itself. The near misses as you weave through the raptor paddock in the first half are truly amazing. Then the second half is about the sight lines through the park. And these visuals are accompanied by masterful pacing and excellent elements. The first half is a solid launch and two inversions combining abrupt airtime with laterals. Then the second half cranks things up with some more intense airtime, particularly on the top hat and that twisted airtime hill. Then you have two more top tier inversions. The stall has some sweet inverted airtime. Then the Mosasaurus roll tries to chuck you into the water down below. Number 7. Conda at Wallaby, Belgium. This is Intamin's best mega coaster to date. It's a marriage of their traditional hypers with an RMC. You have a very similar twisting first drop to that of Expedition G-Force, and it's every bit as great. Then you have some large camelbacks and bunny hills to sustain negative Gs these rides are known for. 
Then you have the RMC-like elements with a large outward bank giving sideways the stand ejector, and a rapid series of airtime bumps on the way back to the station. Number 6. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City RMC's original wood coaster is relentless. This coaster is a giant airtime-laden drop down a hill, and then it rips through the rest of the layout. It's fast to begin with, but the speed is amplified by all the trees since the layout takes place deep in the woods. You get some powerful airtime moments, some conventional, and other times while on your side. The only time you slow down is during the finale when it's advantageous to do so. You have a double barrel roll while climbing uphill. As you decelerate, the hang time gets stronger. And this is a must at night because you can barely see anything back there. The only thing keeping this out of the top 5 is the ride's relatively short length. Number 5. Untamed at Wallaby Holland This is the RMC with the most inversions. There are 5 of them, and they're all wonderful. The double roll at the start is my favorite. You have some ridiculous hang time and it's super disorienting too. Then you have two rolls with some more hang time later in the ride. The rest of the layout is a fast-paced barrage of airtime. The first half has some bigger hills with sustained negative Gs. Then the second half is a series of bumps in rapid-fire succession, and you have no time to recover in between. Now I do need to note that I've only ridden this coaster on days with heavy rain, so it's entirely possible it's running extra fast and intense. Number 4. Voyage at Holiday World This Gravity Group wood coaster is a three-course meal. The outward leg feels like a hyper coaster with the giant camelbacks full of floater airtime. The turnaround section is a chaotic blitz of airtime pops and laterals. Then the return run tosses you upwards and sideways as you barrel back down the hill. It's impressive how long this ride is without losing a beat. This ride is an endurance test in the best way possible. It's a smorgasbord of airtime through the woods. I just prefer the top three because they offer similarly wild rides, just with stronger airtime. Number 3. Iron Gwazi of Busch Gardens, Tampa This RMC hybrid conversion looks nothing like its predecessor. You have that imposing, slightly beyond vertical drop loaded with ejector airtime. Then you charge through a layout full of great elements. This has more intensity than the other RMCs between the positives and the valleys, whip on the transitions, and accelerated pacing. This rise airtime in droves with the elements like the giant outward bank, and then the reverse wave turn underneath the lift hill standing out. And you also have my favorite inversion in all of Florida with the death roll. It is shocking how quickly you rotate through it. I almost put this ride at the 2 spot, but the ride ahead of it offered way more length and I could not ignore that. Number 2. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point RMC's original Hyper Hybrid may offer the most airtime of any coaster in the world, and almost every instance of it is ejector and strong ejector too. The first half has larger elements with some fantastic sustained airtime, most notably on the big vertical drop, the top hat, and that incredible outward banked camelback. The second half feels like the smaller hybrid conversions earlier on this list, with the quicker spurts of airtime. Then you also have four inversions mixed in beautifully that also lift you out of your seat. And coming in number one is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This coaster checks all the boxes for me. You have a one-of-a-kind setting. It goes over a hill, and it's nestled in a wooded valley. Then you have flawless pacing. This coaster goes so fast that it feels like it'll tear itself apart, and the speed is augmented by the trees you whiz past. And the ride only seems to get faster as it goes. And every element works for me. The launched lift tells some sneaky force to it. The first half has the sustained airtime including on the wave turn and twist and shout when you're on your side. Then the second half is some of the most forceful airtime on the planet, particularly on that legendary quad down. That moment is a beautiful assault on everyone's thighs. Now I know some criticize this ride for not being as fast as it was in its opening year, but I've only ridden this coaster in its so-called inferior state, and it has knocked my socks off each time. So those are my top 100 roller coasters as of the end of 2022. This is a stacked list, so there were some fantastic rides that couldn't quite make the cut. Let me know your thoughts on this list, or any of the rides I mentioned down below. Just a reminder, this channel also has an Instagram that posts quite frequently, if you want to check that out too. And there's also a Discord server to connect with fans of the channel. Links to both are down in the description. 
If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.